Okay, tonight's topic is called Cry unto the Lord. Tobit 4, verse 18. Let's read that. Tobit chapter 4, Tobit. verse 18. Come on. The book of Tobit chapter 4, verse 18. Ask mm -hmm. counsel of all that are wise and despise not any counsel that is profitable. He says, despise not any count, despise not any counsel that is profitable. Now watch this. The, the commandment is ask counsel of all that are wise and despise not any counsel that is profitable. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay, give me Sirach. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32, verse 18. Sirach 32, verse 18. Let's read that. The commandment the is... The commandment is ask counsel. That's a command. That's not a suggestion. It's a commandment. You understand? Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 2, verse 18. Mm -hmm. A man of counsel will be considered. You see that thing? A man of counsel will be considered. Meaning you'll sit down and consider all the things, all the decisions that you're about to make and the consequences thereof. That's a man of counsel. You understand? Read. But a strange and a proud man is not taunted with fear. Meaning you're not afraid of the Lord. You're in a fear of the Most High God. That's why you don't, you're not going to consider the decisions that you're about to make. Consider the consequences of those decisions. You understand? And the impact thereof. Go ahead. Even when of himself has done without counsel. You see that thing? It says, even of himself, you've done without counsel, meaning you don't seek counsel. Because a man of a man of a man of the Lord, guess what they will do? They will make sure that they seek counsel because it says a man of counsel will be considered. That means a man of a, a man that is void of counsel, they are inconsiderate. They are void of they are void of judgment. You understand? Go ahead. Watch this. Verse 19. Do nothing without advice. Mm -hmm. You see that? Do nothing without advice. Go ahead. And when thou hast once done, repent not. He says, when thou hast once done, repent not. Meaning once you start doing the counsel, don't stop doing the counsel. Why? Because guess what? That's how you're going to be able to get your thing, your mind right. That's how you're going to be able to build the nation. We build the nation with counsel. You understand? You're not going to be est establish a nation without counsel. Watch this. Give me that in uh, Proverbs chapter 11. Okay, Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. When no counsel is, the people fall. You see that? We see what happens when there's no counsel. Where no counsel is, the people fall. Meaning, you don't see counsel, you are definitely going to fall. Because look at us as a nation. We have fallen. We are at the bottom of society. We are at the bottom of all nations because of what? Because we decided to repent of the counsel that the Lord gave unto us. You understand? We stopped following the counsel, which is what? The commandments of the Most High. That's how you make proper judgments. Go ahead. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. You see that thing? In the multitude of counselors, there is safety because they are going to be guided in the way in which you should go and that counsel is going to save your life. You understand? Give me Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Watch this. The book of Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Righteousness exalted the nation. Read. Sin is a reproach to any people. You see what the problem is? It says righteousness exalted a nation. That's a good thing. Meaning the only way our nation is going to be exalted above all nations on earth, guess what? It's not going to be done through politics, religion, democracy. None of that is going to be done through righteousness. It says righteousness exalted a nation. We, the nation of Israel, we are going to be exalted above all nations on earth because we what? We follow after righteousness. We apply God's commandments. Give me that in Luke 1 and 6. Okay, Luke. Luke chapter 1. The 
book of Luke, chapter one, verse six. Go ahead. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. You see that thing? So with the reason why the, what made them blameless was what? They were walking in all the commandments of the Lord, blameless. That's how they were righteous before the Lord. So go back to Proverbs 14, verse 34 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verses 34. Go ahead. Righteousness exalted the nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. So now the first part of the first part, it says righteousness exalted a nation. So God's command, us keeping God's commandments, that's how we are going to be exalted as a nation on this earth. You understand? But if that is, but, but sin, the flip side of that, but sin is a reproach to any people. Right now we are a reproach because we're in the midst of sin. As a nation, we have broken God's commandments. As a nation, we have sinned. So now that's why we are a reproach to the nations on earth now. The nations don't call us blessed. They don't call us wise. They call us niggers and pigs and duckies and kafirs. That's what they call us. That's not a blessing. That's a curse. You understand? Because what? We left the righteousness that the Most High God gave unto us. That's why. Now, let's go back. Tobit. No, no. Go, go back to Sirach. Sirach chapter 32, verse 18 again. The book of Ecclesiastes 32, verse 18. Mm -hmm. A man of counsel will be considerate. But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Mm -hmm. When of himself he hath done without counsel. Even, of, even when of himself he hath done without counsel. Meaning he does not even consider the, the impact that a counsel will do to his life. For his life, for his nation. You understand? Next verse, come on. Do nothing without advice. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast once done, repent not. Read that part again. And when thou hast once done, repent not. No, no, read the whole verse again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 19. Do nothing without advice. Mm -hmm. And when thou hast once done, Repent not. He says, do nothing without advice, meaning do nothing without counsel. So verse, verse, verse 18, when it says a man of counsel, then verse 19 says, do nothing without advice because the, the advice is the counsel. You understand? The advice is the counsel. Okay, watch this. Give me Sirach 37, verse 16 now. Ecclesiastes 37, verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastic, the book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 16. Read. Let reason go before every enterprise mm -hmm. and counsel before every action. You see that thing? Let reason go before every enterprise. In order for you to let reason go before every, meaning what? Don't use your emotions before when you, when you, in, when you get yourself involved in any business, it says, don't use emotions. Don't let your emotions lead the way. It says, let reason go before every enterprise and cancel before every action. You see that thing? The business of the Mosai, everything that you do, you must see cancel. Okay? You must let reason, meaning sense, go before every enterprise and cancel before every action. So it's not some of the actions, no, every action. The reason why you find yourself in some trouble is because you don't cancel before every action because at that point, you think, no, no, I know how to do this. You understand? Once you do that, that's when you lose. That's when Satan enters in and says, I got it from here. You understand? The, the scriptures is telling you right there, let reason go before every enterprise. In order for you to have sensible reasoning, you need the laws of God. You understand? I mean, it's like even when you go into business, right? Business of the world. You go into business of the world. Guess what? The people that, that, that have been in business many years, 
They, that's why they have seminars. They, they have YouTube channels and all of that to tell you how they started and so on and so forth. You understand? You want to be an entrepreneur, you start looking at people like that as an example to see how they did it, their things, what the, the lessons they've learned and so forth. But when it comes to the scriptures, that just goes out the window. You see that? So we need to have sense in our minds to make sensible decisions. Okay? Now go back to Tobit now. Go back to Tobit chapter 4, verse 18 again. The book of Tobit chapter 4, verse 18. Read. Right? Counsel of all that are wise. Mm -hmm. And despise not any counsel that is profitable. It says, don't despise any counsel that is profitable. Give me that in uh, 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4, verse 16. You know, I started at verse 15. First, uh, First Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Read that. First book of Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Of whom be thou way also. No, no. First Timothy. First Timothy 4, verse 15. First book of Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, mm -hmm. that thy profiting may appear to all. That thy what? That thy profiting may appear to all. That your profiting may appear to all when you give yourself wholly unto them. What is, the, what is he talking about? Jump up to verse 14. Read verse 14. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee, by no, prophecy. No. Okay, uh, before that, read verse 13 and 14 together. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Can I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You see that thing? So it says, give attendance to reading. It says, until I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. You see that thing? Give me that in Proverbs. Let's see what he's talking about. He says, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. What is this doctrine that you must give yourself wholly unto it? Watch this. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. For I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. You see that thing? I give you good doctrine. Forsake ye not my law. So the doctrine that we are commanded to give ourselves wholly unto them is the laws of the Most High. So go back to uh, 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4, verse 13 again. 1 Book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Till I come, give attendance to reading. Read. Exhortation to doctrine. You see that thing? To exhortation to doctrine, meaning the laws of God. Go ahead. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. Stop right there. What did he say? Neglect not the gift that is in thee. He says, don't neglect the gift that is in you. What is that gift that is in us? Give me that in Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Acts chapter 2 verse 38. You don't neglect, because when you neglect, that means you are doing what? You are no longer diligent. You're no longer taking care of that gift. You are neglecting it. You are rejecting it. You understand? You no longer value it. Read what you got. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. Read. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall what? And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That gift that is in us, that's the gift of the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? Acts 7.51. Read that. The book of Acts chapter 7 verse 51. Mm -hmm. You stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. So now he says, we do always resist the Holy Ghost as our fathers did. So do we today. Verse 53, jump down to verse 53. 
who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. That's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the laws of God. So that's a gift. God's commandments is a gift because without God's laws, we're not going to get the kingdom. Without God's commandments, we're not going to stop being evil. Without God's commandments, we will remain in slavery at the bottom of society, living in the ghettos, komikukung, impoverished, single parent households, broken families, so on and so forth. The laws of God is a gift because it's a chance for us to come out of these conditions. That's a gift right there. You understand? Now, go back to where he was at. Uh, 1 Timothy 4, verse 14. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 14. Mm -hmm. Neglect not the gift that is in thee. That's the gift. They give the law. You understand? And because with the laws of God, we get power to rule all nations on earth. Read on. Which was given thee by prophecy. You see that thing? Which was given to us by prophecy. Because the prophet brought the scriptures out. Read. With the laying on of the hands of the priest. Presbytery. 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 Jump down to verse 15. Next verse. Go ahead. Meditate upon these things. Mm -hmm. Give thyself wholly to them. Read. That thy profiting may appear to all. You see that thing? It says meditate upon these things. Meditate upon what? Meditate upon the doctrine that you was taught. Meditate upon the gift that you was given. And give yourself wholly unto them. That thy profiting may appear to all. Who's the all? All those that need to learn what you know. You understand? Give me that in 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. Watch this. 2 Timothy 2, verse 1. 2 Book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 1. Mm -hmm. How therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Because the grace that is in Christ Jesus is what? Has been given a chance to keep God's command to repent before the Lord returns. So he says, you must be strong in the grace that has been given to you. Because when the Lord returns, no more grace. You understand? Go ahead. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses. Read. The same commit thou to faithful men. Mm -hmm. who, shall have, who shall be able to teach others also. You see that thing? That's why you men, you brothers are in here. You sisters as well, you teach by your, you, you teach by your example. The Tyrus 2 classes, the Proverbs 31 and so forth. Mm -hmm. Brothers, they go to camp and all of that. You are being groomed to become leaders to wake your na the nation up. That's what we're reading. It says, it says, the same commit thou to faithful men who should be able to teach others also. You see that thing? Go back to uh, 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 15. Watch this. First book of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. Come on. That the profiting may appear to all. That your profiting may appear to all. Because the doctrine, which is the laws of God, the gift that we was given to what? To get the chance to get the king. That's a gift right there. You understand? By right, we should all be dead. But the Lord has given us a chance to get ourselves right, to get our minds correct. So now he says your profiting must appear to all. You understand? Meaning your brothers and sisters not in the truth, in the world, they must see a change in you and start to ask questions or what's going on with you? You used to do X, Y, and Z. Now you're no longer doing none of that stuff. What's going on? Then you begin to bring them to the scriptures. This is what actually is changing me. This is what's going on. You understand? That's how they're going to profit from your, from your example. Go ahead. Verse 16. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. Mm -hmm. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. You see that thing? You are going to save yourself and those that will hear the things that you will teach them out of this book. That's when the prophet will come. You understand? So that's why, go back to Tobit now. Tobit chapter 4, 
verse 18 again. The book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Ask counsel of all that are wise. Read. And despise not any counsel that is profitable. You see that thing? The counsel that is profitable is what? Is the doctrine, the sound doctrine, the commandments of the Mosai, the laws, the statutes, what to do and what not to do. That's the counsel that is profitable unto men and women in this truth. And those are brothers and sisters that are without this truth. Go ahead. Verse 19. Bless the Lord thy God always, and desire of him that thy ways may be directed. Read. And that all thy paths and counsels may prosper. You see that thing? That all thy paths and counsels may prosper. He says, you must bless the Lord thy God always. How you do that? You keep his commandments. You understand? That all thy paths and counsels may prosper. Go ahead. Come on. For every nation has not counsel. That's the key right there. This is the part I wanted to get to. He says, for every nation, he says, because. Because he said, bless the Lord thy God always, and desire of him that thy ways may be direct. Meaning what? You must desire the Lord, you must desire the things of the Lord, that your ways may be directed by the Lord. That all thy paths and counsels may prosper. Because, that's the word for me, because every nation hath not counsel. So he, Tobit comes back and says, listen, all the nations on earth, they don't have the gift that you got. The gift that we have is that when we find, pro when, we, when we have problems in our lives, we find ourselves in some troubles, guess what? The most high God has solutions on how to come out. The other nations don't have this. The other nations don't have this blessing. We do. You understand? He says, for every nation hath not counsel. That's why the other nations, they have therapists, you understand, psychiatrists, psychologists, and all of that. And, you know, they go to schools and they be study that stuff. We don't have to do that. The most High God has given us a way out of any and all trouble. Whatever problem you have in your life, you can come out of it because the most High God has a solution on how to come out. That's a blessing. That's a blessing right there. You see the other nations, well, our people are involved in those stuff, drugs and all that. But when you look at it, right, you see that the most high God, the power of the Lord can, can get a brother to stop smoking. Because that's a drug. The power of the Lord can get a brother to stop whoremongering. The power of the Lord can stop a brother from, you know, doing all type of evil, gang banging, you understand, robbing and stealing. The power of the Lord can do that. The commandments. The other nations don't have that type of counsel, but we have that. You understand? That's why verse 18 says, ask counsel of all that are wise and despise not any counsel that is profitable. The counsel that's profitable is this whole Bible. Read this verse 19 again. The book of Tobit, chapter 4, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Bless the Lord thy God always. And desire of him that thy ways may be directed. Read. All thy paths and counsel may prosper. Read on. Every nation hath not counsel. Mm -hmm. But the Lord himself giveth all good things. And he humbleth whom he will. As he will. Read. Now therefore, my son, remember my commandments. Neither let them be put out of thy mind. So this whole, this whole verse is explaining what? He is commanding Tobias to remember the commandments. He says, therefore, now therefore, my son, remember my commandments, neither let them be put out of thy mind. The commandments, that's, the, that's where you get counsel from, God's commandments. You understand? He says, every nation don't have counsel like we do. And we don't have to pay for it. It's free of charge. The nations have the other nations have to go to school and pay exuberant amount of money to be psychologists, but to be psychiatrists and all of that. And you see our people, they go to school, they, they, they are therapists and all of that. But guess what? They cannot fix their life. Because that we don't vibrate in that frequency. 
The most High God is not saying don't go to school. No, don't get it twisted. But for, for, for your life to function correctly, you must apply what is written in this book. You understand? You must apply what's written in this book right here. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 33, verse 11. For every nation hath not counsel. Keep that in mind. You understand? Psalms 33, verse 11. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Mm -hmm. The thought of his heart to all generations. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. What is the counsel of the Lord? His commandments. It standeth forever. You understand? To all generations. It never fails. His righteousness is forever. His counsel is forever. You understand? And it's foolproof. There's nothing wrong with it. The laws of God is 100% foolproof. No side effects. Read verse 11 again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 33, verse 11. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever. Mm -hmm. The thought of his heart to all generations. Next verse, watch this. Blessed is the nation whose, whose God is the Lord. Mm. And the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. Now that's heavy right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. Because verse, th verse 11 continues on in verse 12 down. But verse 12 says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Why? Because the counsel of the Lord, it extends to all generations. Which generation? The generations of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The sons and daughters of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It only extends to us. So it says, the counsel of the Lord standeth forever. You understand? To the people that is blessed by the Most High. Who's that? The 12 tribes of Israel. Read verse 12 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. The, and the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Who, did, who, who are the people that the Lord has chosen for his own inheritance? Give me that in Isaiah 44, verse 1 real quick. Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 44, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servant, and Israel, whom I have chosen. And Israel, whom I have chosen. So go back to Psalms 33, verse 12 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the nation who, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Read. And the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. The people that the Lord has chosen for his own inheritance is the 12 tribes of Israel. The so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. So it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Why is he saying that statement? Why? Give me that in Psalms now. Give me Psalms 96. Okay. Psalms chapter 96. Or oh, you know what? Give me Second Chronicles. Not First Chronicles chapter 16 verse 26. First Chronicles. First book of Chronicles, chapter 16, verses 26. Read. For all the gods of the people are idols, mm -hmm. but the Lord made the heavens. You see what he's saying? For all the gods of the people are idols. The people is talking about who? The other nations. You understand? That's why it says, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Why? Because the gods of the other nations, they are idols. The Chinese, they be worshipping Buddha. White people be worshipping Caesar Borgia. You understand? Um, the Arabs be worshipping a black rock called Allah. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Who's that? The people that the Lord has chosen for his inheritance. That's the 12 tribes of Israel, the sons and daughters of Jacob. You understand? Go back. Go back to Psalms. Okay, Psalms 33 verse 12. Read that again. The book of Psalms chapter 33 verse 12. Mm -hmm. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Read. And the, and the people whom he had chosen for his own inheritance. 
Now watch this. Give me Psalm 77 verse 1. Psalm 77 and verse 1. The book of Psalms chapter 77 verse 1. I cried unto God with my voice. Even unto God whom, whom with my voice. And he gave ear unto me. Read verse 1 again. The book of Psalms chapter 77 verse 1. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice, and he gave ear unto me. So now David, you see what David is saying? He says, I cried unto God with my voice. So you can't just be thinking things in your head and say, you know, the Lord can read my mind. So, you know, he knows what I'm going through. No, no. Mm -mm. He says, I cried. When somebody's crying, you can hear them. Meaning what? They have to speak things out loud to the Lord. He says, I cried unto God with my voice, even, even unto God with my voice, in meaning indeed unto God with my voice, he gave ear unto me. So he's saying indeed unto God with my voice, meaning don't get it twisted in the, on the first statement because we know the mind of the Negro is very selective amnesia. So he says, I cried unto God with my voice, even meaning indeed unto God with my voice, meaning listen, I use my voice. You understand? The Lord could hear me when I was crying unto him. That's what King David is teaching us here. You understand? Watch this. We're coming back here. Give me Psalms 142 verse 1. Psalms 142 verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 142 verse 1. Go ahead. I cried unto the Lord in my voice. Mm -hmm. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. So he's repeating the same thing again here. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. Now he's telling you what did he do. He says, I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. Meaning what? I came before the Lord in the spirit of what? Humility. To submit myself to the Lord and to confess my sins out loud to the Most High God. Now jump down to verse, no, read the next chapter, Psalms 143 verse 1, because, you know, this is one long letter. These are long songs. These are songs right here. Chapters and verses were added later for reference. You understand? He's still on the same thought. Watch this, Psalms 143 verse 1. Let's see what it means when it says, he cried unto the Lord. Read that, Psalms 143 verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear my prayer, O Lord. What did he say? Hear, hear my prayer, O Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Hear my prayer, O Lord. That's when he cried unto the Lord. You understand? With his voice. He was praying. He was sending the prayers up to the Most High God. Read that part again. The book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Mm -hmm. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness, answer me. Mm -hmm. And in thy righteousness. You see what he's saying? In thy faithfulness, answer me. And in thy righteousness. So King David was praying unto the Most High God because he was in trouble. So the same thing that he did, we must do today. When we are in trouble, we don't go to a psychiatrist. Mm -mm. We send the prayers up. We seek, supply, we seek guidance from the Most High. We open this book and see where it all went wrong and repent and get our minds right. Pray to the Lord to forgive our sins and blot out, blot out our transgressions. You understand? That's what we have to do. That is the counsel that the Lord has given to all Israel. Read that again. Psalms 143 verse 1. The book of Psalms 143 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In thy faithfulness, answer me. And in now thy righteousness. Go back, now go back to Psalm 77 now. Psalm 77. Verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I cried unto God with my voice. Even unto God with my voice. And he gave ear to me. Meaning he gave ear, meaning the Lord hearkened unto my prayers. You understand? Hold this. 
Give me that in um, give me that in John. Okay, give me John 9 31. John chapter 9, verse 31. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 9, verses 31. Mm -hmm. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. You see that part right there? Now we know that God heareth not sinners. The key word here says, heareth not. It says, he heareth not. Remember what David said. David says in Psalms one, in Psalm 77, verse 1. Read Psalm 77, verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 1. Read. I cried unto God with my voice, mm -hmm. even unto God with my voice. And he gave me the book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 1. I cried unto God with my voice, even unto God with my voice. And he gave ear unto me. He says, he gave ear unto me, meaning the Lord heard my voice. Because I didn't come before the Lord with the spirit of I was, I was being fake. No, I kept it real with the Lord. I kept it at 100. So now he's saying, and he gave ear unto me. The Lord could see the, the spirit that David was, the King David was rolling in. He said, oh, I'm going to listen to him. Why? Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 51. Watch this. Psalms chapter 51, verse 16. Psalms 51, verse 16. This is how King David came before the Lord. You understand? He wasn't hiding his sins before the Lord. He was real with the Lord. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 16. Mm -hmm. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else would I give it. Mm -hmm. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. So now King David is telling the Lord, he says, I would give you a sacrifice, but I know that's not what you want. Next verse tells you what the Lord wants. Go ahead. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. You see that part right there? The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, meaning what? When he says a broken spirit, what is that going into? Give me that in 2 Corinthians 7 verse 9. This is what he's going into. The sacrifices of the Lord are a broken spirit. Okay, watch this. What's my parents, sir? Second Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Second book of Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9. Mm -hmm. Now I rejoice. Not that ye were made sorry, but that ye sorrowed to repentance. You see that thing? That's a broken spirit. You sorrow to repentance. Is not you are not just sorrow, you are not just sorrowful, but you are sorrowful because your sorrow is pushing you to repent. That's what is that's what David is saying when he says the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit because you are sorrowful because you want to repent, you want to please the Father. Go ahead. For you were made sorry after a godly manner. Mm -hmm. You might receive damage by us in nothing. You see that thing? So the sorrow that you must have is that you are sorrow, you are sorrow, you are sorrowful because you want to repent. You understand? It's not just a waste of tears. Mm -mm. You are sorrowful because truly you want to repent, get your mind right. Go back to Psalms now, 51, verse 16. I mean verse 17. The book of Psalms, chapter 51, verse 17. Mm -hmm. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken spirit. Now we understand what it means. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit because you are sorrow to repent. Go ahead. A broken and a contrite heart. A broken and a contrite heart. Meaning what? You see the evils that you've been doing and now, you, 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 because you understand what the most high God is saying, what the law says about those evils that you are in, guess what? Now you want to repent. And you actually do repent. Go ahead. Oh God, 
thou wouldst not despise. The Lord is not going to despise that. The Most High God will not despise a what a broken spirit and a contrite heart, meaning you are sincere. You really want to get your mind right. The Lord says, I'm not going to despise that. You understand? The Lord will grant you to return. The Lord will give you mercy, will grant you mercy unto you for you to get your mind right. You understand? Go back to Psalms now. 77 again. Psalm 77 verse, verse 1. The book you know of what? Psalms no, no. at 77. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Go back to John 9. I wanted to go there for a reason. Go back to John 9. John 9 verse 31. The book of John chapter 9 verses 31. Mm -hmm. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. God heareth not. He's not going to hear the sinners. You understand? But those that want to repent, realizing that they are in the midst of sin, they have a contrite spirit. They have a broken spirit. They sorrow to repent. Guess what? The Lord is going to hear their prayers because now they're taking a step to get their mind right. The Lord, the Lord will hear those. You understand? Go ahead. But if any man be, wash, be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. You see what he's saying? But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, because what is he telling you? He's telling you there are those people that are not worshipers of God. These are devil worshipers. They worship Satan. They celebrate Christmas, devil worshipers. Celebrate birthdays, devil worshipers. They celebrate Women's Day, devil worshipers. Because that's not in the Bible. You understand? That's not in the Bible. Because there was a, I think there was an Edomite couple. They said, no, they just opened a church. I think it's the Church of Satan or something like that. I mean, it was a big thing in the news. But they're not confronting the Christian church, worshiping white Jesus. It's the same thing. But nobody's saying nothing about that. But it's still this is the exact same thing. So now here it says, if any man be a worshiper of God, because guess what? There are those that don't worship the Lord. They worship Satan. You understand? Our people that don't want to repent and do it his will. So we, because they don't want to repent, they are doing the will of Satan. Okay? Read that again, verse 31. The book of John chapter 9, verses 31. Mm -hmm. Now we know that God heareth not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. But if you are a if you worship the most high and you do his will, is as him he heareth. Okay, give me that in Psalms 40. Psalms 40 verse 8. So we get the will of the Father. Okay. If any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. Okay, watch this. Psalms 40 verse 8. The book of Psalms chapter 40 verse 8. Mm -hmm. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of the Father is when you do his laws. You apply his commandments. So let's go back. Go back to John 9. John chapter 9 verse 31 again. The book of John chapter 9 verse 31. Mm -hmm. Now we know that God here is not sinners. But if any man be a worshiper of God and do his will, him he heareth. So the Lord says, I'm going to hear you if you want to do my will. You want to do my will? Because... Many of our people, like our people in the Christian church, our people that don't even go to church, they be talking about, me, I just want to do the, the will of God. Though even those that don't go to church, you'll be hearing they saying st statements like that, but they don't know what the will of God is. So you brothers and sisters in this truth, really, you are truly blessed. Because our people, they go through their life not knowing what the will of God is. That's heavy. Because when they discover what the will of God is, they will discover who they are. That's why this is a, it's a gift that you know this. It's not an accident. It's a gift. You understand? Let's go back to Psalms now. 77 verse 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 77 verse 1. Go ahead. 
I cried unto God with my voice, even mm -hmm. unto God with my voice. And he gave ear unto me. And he gave ear unto me. The Lord is only going to give ear unto you if you do his will. If you don't do the will of the Father, the Lord will not hear you in that day. It's going to be a waste of time. It's going to fall on deaf ears. You understand? You have to be doing the will of the Father. And when you're coming in, you must repent as an Israelite and keep God's commandments. The Lord will deal with you. How? Because when you pray, the Lord will hear you. When you're going through struggles, when, you, when you're going through struggles, the, the prophets will bring out the laws to you so you can repent. That's how the Lord is answering your prayers. You understand? Verse 2 now. Come on. I will open my mouth. No, no. Psalm 77 verse 2. The book of Psalm 77 verse 2. Mm -hmm. In the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. You see what David is saying? He says, in the day of my trouble, meaning when you find yourself in some heavy situations, you understand? You are in the midst of sin. Your sins are weighing you down. You are drowning in your sins. You better pray to the Lord. He says, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. You understand? He didn't go to a psychologist. No, he sought the Lord. Where? He says, search the Lord while he, while he may be found. You must come into this Bible. The Lord, will, the Lord is not unrighteous. To, the Lord is not unrighteous where you don't have, you have a leadership structure to be able for you to be able to know where to go to deal with such in, the situations that you have in your life. That's why he says, in the day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. You understand? My soul ran in the night, meaning in the night, this thing was troubling me. You understand? I couldn't sleep. This thing is troubling my soul. Okay? And sees not, my soul refused to be comforted. Meaning what? His soul refused to be comforted everywhere else because wherever you go to seek for comfort, you're not going to find it if it's not in the Bible. Wherever you go, you will not going to find, you will not be fulfilled until you come into this book. It doesn't matter how many gymnastics you can do. If you don't come through this book, it's a waste of time. You understand? Watch this. Give me second Ezra, chapter 16, verse uh, 76. Because what we're reading here is saying, it says, in the day of my travel, 2nd Ezra 16, verse 67. I think it's 67 that I want. Yep, 67. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 67. Read that. 2nd book of Ezra, chapter 16, verses 67. Go ahead. Behold, God himself is the judge. Mm -hmm. Fear him. Do what did he say? Fear him. Fear him. He says, God himself is the judge. Yeah, he's the main judge. You understand? The Lord killeth and maketh alive. He is the main judge. He says, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Go ahead. Leave off from your sins. Meaning stop sinning. Leave off from your sins. Stop sinning. Stop breaking God's laws. Go ahead. Forget your iniquities. Meaning what? Forget your iniquity. When you forget something, that means you don't remember it. You understand? You don't remember it because something else is sitting in its place. You forget your sins. You don't sin no more. You don't get yourself involved in those sins. Now, what's in place? The laws of God is in, is in place of the things that you need to occupy your spirit. Right? To meddle no more with them forever. You see that part right there? To meddle no more with them forever. So meaning don't meddle with your sins. Don't meddle with the with don't meddle with your sins. Meaning the thing, the 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 the, the mental hang-ups that you know you have, do not go back into those the situations that will lend you in, into those those the the, the mental hang-ups. You know, you, you understand, for instance, fornication, lying, stealing, cheating deceit, hatred, envy, jealousy, so on and so on. The list goes on. You understand? Uncleanness. All of which, guess what? When you go back, when you meddle with them, because when you are meddling, what are you doing? It's like you are, it's like you are tinkering with it. Eventually, 
is it will destroy you because you are tinkering with that thing when you're supposed to what abstain from it okay read verse 67 again in book of Ezra, chapter 16 verse 67 behold god himself is the judge mm -hmm. fear him live off from your sins and forget your iniquities read to meddle no more with them forever mm -hmm. so shall god lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble you see that part right there so the only time when the lord will deliver you from the trouble that you are in is that you have to humble yourself down and acknowledge your offenses and repent. When you do that, that's when the Lord will lead you forth and deliver you from all the trouble that you find yourself in. So that's why, go back to Psalm 77 now. Psalm 77 verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 70, 77 verse 2. Mm -hmm. In the day of my Bible, in the Bible, I sought the Lord. My soul ran in the night and ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. My soul refused to be comforted. So when he was in his trouble, he saw the Lord. The Lord delivered him from all that trouble. You understand? Because guess what? He, decided, he, he repented from his sins. He meddled not with his sins forever. You're anymore forever. And that's when the Lord said, okay, now I'm going to lead you now. And I'm going to deliver you out of this trouble. The same way the Lord delivered us out of Egypt is the same way the Lord will deliver us out of spiritual Egypt. But before we leave spiritual Egypt, we must be delivered spiritually. How do we do that? We apply the laws of God. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 3. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Salah. You see what he's saying? I remembered God and was troubled. I complained. Hmm. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. So you got to think about it. You understand? When you're overwhelmed, you're, the, the, the sin is too great. The sin is too powerful for you. And you still think you can solve it on your own. I mean, King David, he was a man after the most High God's mind. Even himself is saying, I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Selah. So when you pray to the Lord, that's you, you are complaining. You want to come out of the sins that you are in. You are trying, you are fighting. It's just not working. You pray to them. That's how you complain. Because we're in captivity. You understand? We are, under, we are, under, we are in captivity in hard bondage. So the, our, version of, our, our version of complaining to the Lord is we pray to the Lord to deliver us out of these conditions that we're in. That's, the, that's how we complain righteously. A right, launching a righteous complaint, you pray to the Lord. These are my sins. You pray to the Lord to deliver you from, this, from these sins right here, to deliver you from these demons that have a stronghold on you. You understand? Read verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 3. Mm -hmm. I remembered God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Salah. Now, you see that? Yeah, mm, there's, there's meat in this, meat, this bone right here. It says, I remembered God and was troubled. Now, watch this. I remembered God. Because a lot of the times you find yourself, you are in the midst of sin. You don't remember the Mosa. You don't. Because you keep now repeating the sin over and over. You are not remembering the Lord at that point when you're committing the sin. You are not. So David is saying, listen, he says, I remembered God because he forgot. Because remember, he committed adultery. He slept with a man's wife. He slept with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. Okay. At that point, he didn't remember the Mosa. So when you do your evil, you don't remember the Lord. After you do your evil, that's when Satan leaves you. That's when your mind comes back. Here it says, I remembered God because he had forgotten during the time when he was partaking in the sin. You understand? Give me that in Jeremiah 2, verse 33. Jeremiah 2, verse 32. 32. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 32. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 32, verse 32. 
No, chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 32. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verses 32. Go ahead. Can a maid forget her ornament? Mm. Or a bride her attire? Read. Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. You see that part right there? So he's saying, these two people, he says, can a maid forget her ornament, her makeup? Can a bride... A woman that is about to get married forget her wedding dress? No, they cannot. But he says, but my people have forgotten me days without number. So in the midst of sin, we don't remember the Lord. You understand? So David is telling us, listen, you find yourself in some sin, remember the Lord. But when, you rem when your mind is continually on the Lord, when, when Satan tempts you, you will endure the temptation and you'll overcome it. You see that thing? But if sin is occupying your mind, when, when Satan is done with you, then you remember the Lord after. We're not supposed to move like that. We're supposed to meditate continually on God's laws so that when Satan tempts us with the, because you know, he knows us. When he tempts us with, the, with, with those lusts that we have that we don't want to cleanse ourselves from, guess what? With that, we have to apply God's laws to overcome, to endure. You understand? Go back to Psalms 77, verse 3 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 3. Mm -hmm. I remembered God and was troubled. Mm. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Salah. My, my spirit was overwhelmed, overpowered. Watch this. Go back to 2nd Ezra, chapter 16. Verse 76. Second book of Esdras, chapter 16, verse 76. Read. And the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, say to Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down, mm. and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Now, that's a commandment. It says, and the guide of them who also who, the, who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down. Why? Because it says, because these are those that keep the command. You keep the commandments. The Lord says, don't let your sins weigh you down because the Lord knows that there's going to be temptations in this walk and your chance at overcoming them, you must keep the commandments. You must pray, cry unto the Lord daily so the Lord can give you strength in the day of your trial. You understand? So that, your sins don't weigh you down and lift up themselves. Meaning you don't find yourself overwhelmed or overpowered by that sin that you have deceived yourself into thinking you'll overcome it on your own, on your clever look, on your clever mind, so you think, on your good looks. That, no, that's not going to happen. That will not happen. The minute you go outside of this book, you're on your own. There's no safety, like we read in Proverbs 11. There's no safety anymore. You understand? There's no safety. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Psalms. Give me Psalms 142. Psalms 142, verse 1 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I cried unto the Lord with my voice. With my voice unto the Lord did I make my supplication. Read. I poured out my complaints before him. Mm -hmm. I showed before him my trouble. You see that part right there? I showed before him my trouble. Meaning what? The problems I have. Read again. Verse 2. Mm. That's heavy. The book of... The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 2. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. He says, I poured out my complaint before him. I showed before him my trouble. So you go before the locals. Right now, brothers and sisters, they afflict, we, are, we are all afflicting our souls. All praise to the most high. But while you're afflicting your souls, make sure that you do what? Appear before the Lord 
and pour out your troubles, but you must keep it real. Yeah, keep it 100. Let me prove that because maybe if I, if I, if I keep saying keep it 100, you might think, no, it's not in the Bible. Give me the book of John chapter 4. Okay, John 4, 24. Let's read that. John chapter 4, verse 24. The book of John chapter 4, verse 24. Read. God is a spirit. Mm -hmm. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see that thing? If you, if you say you are a worshiper of the Lord, you're going to do his will like we read, in, we read in John 9. Here it says, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hmm. So you can't be, you can't, you, you can't, you, you cannot possibly think that you can come before the Lord and not confess your sins and not keep it real with the Lord. You can't because that's what we're reading. here. It's not because I, you know, I'm, I'm just saying that. No, it's written in the book. Okay. Keep it real with the most high. Go back to Psalms now. Psalms 142 verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verses, 20, verses 3. Verse 2. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 2. Mm -hmm. I poured out my complaint before him. I showed him, I showed before him my trouble. Next verse, come on. When my spirit was overwhelmed with thee, then thou knowest my past. You see what he's saying? He says, when my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knowest my past. So guess what? Because when you are overwhelmed, but you don't cry to the most High God, guess what you will do? You're not going to let reason go before every enterprise. You're going to move based on how you feel at that point. You understand? Read that again. The book of Psalms chapter 142, verse 3. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, then thou knewest my path. Mm -hmm. The way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. You see what he's saying? Now, now he's confessing to the, he says, he says, in the way wherein I walked, have they privily laid a snare for me. Because when you choose to walk in the, the way that please you, guess what's gonna have, what, guess what you're gonna be waiting for you? A snare that is gonna be laid privily for you. Meaning what? You're not gonna readily see it. It's gonna be one in plain sight. Because he decided to make that decision. He decided to follow his own thought process. He decided to follow his own lust. Guess what? He found a snare that was laid privily for him. So that's us today. You don't move according to the council. Guess what? You are basically inviting demons in your life. And the snares that are laid privily for you, you will fall in those traps. You understand? So that David is confessing it. So we must have the same spirit. Go ahead. I looked, I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. You see that part right there? No man cared for my soul. So what is he letting you know? The spirit is the one that was defiled. So this says, no man cared for my soul. Because the minute you go outside of this Bible, no man is going to care for your soul because only the Lord cares for our souls. The Christian church don't do that. They don't care for your soul. They care about your money. Politics, they care about your vote. You understand? That's all they care about. It's got nothing to do with what? Your soul being correct in the sight of the Lord. They don't care about that. So that's why he says, he says, he seek, he, 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 what? He says, refuge failed me. No man careth for my soul. The man that will care for your soul is the most like God and his prophets that move in the spirit of Christ to teach you God's commandments. You understand? Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 4. Mm -hmm. I looked on my right hand and beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. 
No man cared for my soul. So now I want to show you something. It says, I looked on my right hand and behold, but there was no man that would know me. Watch this. You see that part when it says, I looked on my right hand? Give me that in Psalms 137. Psalms 137 verse 5. It says, I looked on my right. What's supposed to, what, what does that mean? I looked on my right hand. Watch this. Psalms 137 verse 5. Let's read that. The book of Psalms chapter 137 verse 5. Mm -hmm. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. So he says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Give me that in Psalms 140, 147. Psalms 147 verse 12. The book of Psalms. Because yes, it says, it says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem. Who's Jerusalem? Psalms 147, verse 12. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. You see that thing? So Jerusalem is Zion. Okay. Because Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. What do I mean by that? Give me that in Genesis 32 real quick. Genesis chapter 32, verse 27. The book of Genesis, chapter 32. That's my parents, huh? Verse 27. Genesis 32, 27. Come on. The book of Genesis chapter 32, verses 27. Read. And he said unto him, what mm -hmm. is thy name? And he said, Jacob. What is your name? My name is Jacob. Go ahead. And he said, thy name shall be no more Jacob, but no, no. Israel. He says, thy name shall be called no more Jacob. Read that again. Read it right. The book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 28. And he said, thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but mm -hmm. Israel. But what? But Israel. He says, your name is not going to be called Jacob no more. You're going to be called Israel. Go ahead. Come on. For as a prince has thou power with God and with men and has prevailed. You see that part right there when it says... Your name is no longer Jacob, but is Israel now? Because our forefather Jacob's name was changed to Israel before we even went into the land. The land was called the land of Canaan. You understand? So Jerusalem, Israel, we are a people before we are a place. Because Israel is a man. And he had 12 sons and one daughter. Okay? So we are a people before. Excuse me. We are people before we are a place. You understand? So let's go back to Psalms 137 verse 5. The book of Psalms chapter 137 verse 5. Mm -hmm. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, read. did my right hand forget the cunning? It says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. Because guess what? In your right hand, because you know when you after a business meeting is concluded, you don't be you don't be closing the business deal, you're shaking with your left hand. Nobody does that. If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. With your right hand, that's an action for you to agree. You understand? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy 6, verse 8. Let my right hand forget her cunning. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6. What's my parents, sir? Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 8. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 8. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand. Upon thine what? Upon thine hand. That's the commandments. The commandments. Read on. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. 
You see that thing? So it's talking about the commandments of the Most High God. Because when it says, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, because with your hand you do what? You apply. Because your hand is the th is, is the hand does the things that is in your mind. Because when it says, and as frontless between your eyes, what's between your eyes? Your mind. You understand? So the laws of God are supposed to be in your mind so you can what? Apply them. So go back to where he was at now. Psalms 137 verse 5 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 137 verses 5. Mm -hmm. If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget the cunning. So he says, if I forget the old Jerusalem. So when he says forget, where does this take place? In your mind. You understand? In your mind. If I forget the old Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning because what's supposed to be in your mind, the laws of God. With your right hand, you're supposed to be doing what? Applying what is in your mind, which is God's commandments. It says, let what? What? It says, and let my right hand forget her cunning. Meaning what? The beauty of Jerusalem. Okay? The beauty of Jerusalem, the garment, the, the excellency of Jacob, which is what? The commandments of the Mosai. Next verse. Go ahead. If I do remember, if the book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 6. Because mm -hmm, we are rushing. I, do I don't not, understand what's going on. You'll be rushing stuff here. Read verse 6 again. Read it correctly. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 137, verse 6. Mm -hmm. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Read. If I put them above my chief joy. So he's saying, if I do not remember thee, now he's making it plain. Because remember, it says, if I forget thee, O Jerusalem, if I do not remember thee, you don't remember. Because guess what? Jerusalem is a people before it's a place. And what makes us who we are? The laws of God. Once you forget Jerusalem, you forget the children of Israel, you forget the laws of you forget everything about you. You understand? It says what? Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. Meaning what? Let me not speak God's commandments no more if I forget who I am, where I come from. Because that's exactly what happened to us. When we forgot God's commandments, when we rejected it, we no longer remembered who we are. That's, that's some heavy stuff right there. You understand? That's heavy right there. That's some heavy stuff. So go back to Psalms 142 now. Psalms 142, verse 4 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 4. Read. I looked on my right hand and mm -hmm. beheld, but there was no man that would know me. Refuge failed me. No man cared for my soul. When it says there was no man, there was no man that would know me. Because how is the people going to know us? Because right now the people don't know that we're Israel. They don't even care to find out who we are. They just duckies. They are give ducky. You understand? No man would know me. Okay? But when we come back and keep these commandments, we remember who we are, the people will know who we are. Because we go out to the street corners, we confess it before the Gentiles. We are the children of Israel. We are the Jews the Bible speaks of. You understand? Go ahead. Verse 5. Come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verses 5. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. You see what he's saying? He says, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. Watch this. Give me that in Psalms 91. Thou art my refuge. Remember, he says, I cried unto the Lord. How do we cry unto the Lord? That's, the, that's when we pray. You understand? When we fast, we are crying to the Most High. Okay? Watch this. Psalms 91. Psalms 91 verse 1. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 91 verse 1. Come on. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High 
shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The secret place of the Most High God, that's the shadow of the Almighty, right? Next verse, watch this. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my, my what? My God. He You're not listening. You're refuge. not paying attention. No, 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 no. Read verse 2 again. Come on. You are messing me up, bro. The book of Psalms, chapter, 19, chapter 91, verse 2. Go ahead. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my refuge. And my okay. fortress. So King David is saying the Lord is his refuge. That's the same thing we must say this day. The Lord is our refuge. Go ahead. He's my refuge and my what? And my fortress. Read. My God, in him will I trust. My God, in him will I trust. Now watch this. Let's jump back up to verse 1. So the refuge, the secret place, the shadow of the Almighty, it's all making reference to the same thing. The fortress is making reference to the same thing. Read verse 1 again, Psalms 91. The book of Psalms, chapter 91, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now watch this. Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, because that's the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High God, his, the, his shadow, his refuge, his fortress. We're about to read about it right now. Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29. Let's read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 29, verse 29. Mm -hmm. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God. Go ahead. But those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law. That we may do all the words of this law. So the secret place, the share of the Almighty, the fortress, the refuge is the laws of God. When you keep God's commandments, that's where you are. That's when you are under the Lord's refuge. That's when you are under the Lord's shadow. That's when you are under God's secret place, God's commandments. You see the commotion going on on the earth. So there's there's an uproar on earth right now. You understand? You look in in Greece, in Italy, in um, Australia, in France. You understand? What are they doing? They are flooding the streets because they are saying no to the monetary vaccine. Because Emmanuel Macron, he declared in, in France that the, the, the vaccine is going to be compulsory. You understand? And you know how South Africa is, they just dumb as hell. You know our president, oh my God. Okay, let's go back. Psalms 142, Psalms 142 and verse five again. The book of Psalms chapter 142 verse five. Read. I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. So now he's saying, thou art my refuge, okay, and my portion in the land of the living. The land of the living is Jerusalem. You understand? The land of the living. The land of the living is Jerusalem because guess what? Give me a read in Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 2. The land of the living does the land of Jerusalem, okay? The land of milk and honey, okay? Which is the glory of all land, where we're gonna rule all nations on earth. So when you cry unto the Most High God, you must cry that you want the kingdom to come. That's the prayer. The Lord to deliver us out of the troubles that we're in. That's the prayer. You understand? Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22. No, no. Chapter 7, verse 2. Proverbs 7, verse 2. The, the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verses 2. Mm -hmm. Keep my commandments and live. Read. And my law as the apple of thine eye. You see what he's saying? Keep my commandments and live, and my law as the apple of thine eye. The land of the living, guess what? Is the land of Jerusalem. The land of Israel. Because when we return back, guess what we're going to get? Eternal life. The Lord will give us new bodies. He's going to give us the gift of eternal life. To live forever. You understand? That's a gift. Man, that's a beautiful gift. 
Okay? Go back to Psalms 142, verse 6 now. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Attend unto my cry. Read. For I am brought very low. You see that part right there? Attend unto my cry, attend unto my prayer, O Lord. You, you understand? Attend unto my prayer, O Lord, for I am brought very low. Are we not brought very low? We are at a low estate. Guess what? Give me that in Deuteronomy 28. We coming back here. We coming back. We coming back. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 43. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verses 43. Mm -hmm. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Read. And thou shalt come down very low. You see what the Lord is saying? So the strangers, they are the ones that have lifted up themselves. That's why the Lord, that's why David is seeking for refuge. You understand? It says, and no man cared for my soul. He says, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. So when it says, when it says uh, we are brought very low, that's what we're reading it because the strangers have lifted up themselves like over us. They are our rulers now. They, 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 are, they, are, God, they are law, they've, they, they've become laws over us. They tell us what to do, where to sit, what to eat, how to raise our children if you're not in this book. You understand? Read that again. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 43. Mm -hmm. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come down very low. And we shall come down very low. Go back to where he was at. Psalms 142, verse 6. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Attend unto my cry, for I am brought very low. Read. Deliver me from my persecute. Deliver me from my persecutors. Read. For they are stronger than I. They are stronger than I. So you have to really think about, because David was a prophet. So when David was persecuted, when was that? Never, really. Okay, his son wanting to kill him. His son sleeping with his wives and his concubines and all that. Because David is prophesying also. David is prophesying. So when he says, um, he says, deliver me from my persecutors for they are stronger than I. David is prophesying in the spirit in the last day, about the last days. Now. So where is David? He's back. Think about it. King David, he's back, but you don't know who's who. That's a beautiful thing right there. Okay. He says, because for they are stronger than I. Next verse. Watch this. Go ahead. Bring my soul out of prison. You see that thing right there? We are, we are, we are, we've been brought very low. The strangers have lifted up. They are exalted above us. We are brought very low. Now he says, bring my soul out of prison. My soul. That's the key right there. Bring my soul out of prison. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 48. Go ahead. Therefore, shall thou serve thine enemies, mm -hmm. which the Lord shall send against thee. Read. In hunger and in thirst mm -hmm. and in and in nakedness and in want of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So now the Lord, because of our disobedience, the Lord will send us into slavery. You understand? It says in slavery, we would serve our enemies for food, for shelter, for clothes, for water. You understand? And it says, and for want of all things, anything you need, you must go to your enemies for that. And it says, your enemies will put yokes of iron upon your neck until the yokes of iron are no longer necessary. So when King David is saying, deliver my soul out of prison, 
my soul, my spirit. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 17, verse 16. Let's read that now. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 17, verse 16. Go ahead. So then, whosoever there fell down was straightly kept. Mm -hmm. Shut up in a prison without iron bars. So that's our spirit right there. Our spirit now are in a prison without iron bars because now the chains are no longer necessary. Now the mind is imprisoned. You understand? The mind is imprisoned. Watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah. Give me, give me the book of Isaiah. Okay, no, no. Go back to Deuteronomy now. Read Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all the people. Mm -hmm. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Go ahead. And they, thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou, thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. That's how our minds are going to be imprisoned. It says there, once, when we get to the lands of our slavery, it says what? It says we're going to serve other gods. We're going to serve the gods of the people that will hold us captive in those lands. We're going to serve their idols. You understand? Even wood and stone. Wood goes into the Christian wooden cross. The stone goes into the Kaaba stone under Islam. This is Islam and Christianity, which is one of the two major religions and popular religions on earth, man-made religions. You understand? So this is one of the ways our minds are going to be imprisoned that David is praying about, that deliver my soul out of prison. Because Christianity and Islam is going to imprison our people. Not just those two, politics as well. Our people are imprisoned by politics. You understand? They are imprisoned by politics. Now, that's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? Now, watch this. Um, give me Isaiah 42 now, verse 22. Isaiah 42, verse 22. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 22. Go ahead. But this is the people robbed and spoiled. Mm -hmm. They are all of them snared in holes. Read. And they are hid in prison houses. You see that part right there? We are hid in prison houses. Go ahead. They are for a prey mm -hmm. and none delivereth. Read for a spoil and none saith restore. So now you see that part when it says, it says, this is a people robbed and spoiled. We are robbed of everything of ours, our identity, our culture, our book. You understand? Our temples was robbed. Everything, the resources upon where we are, they are being robbed by these nations. So we are a people that is robbed. You understand? Every day, constantly, daily, the nations are robbing us. Now the part, the next part says, we are robbed and we are spoiled. Remember, David says, deliver my soul out of prison. We are robbed and we are spoiled. The prison that we are, we are, we are spoiled by is this right here. Give me that in Colossians 2, verse 8. Because right now we are in a prison without iron bars. We were brought here in chains, but the chains are taken off now the chains are in our minds, spiritually now. You understand? Read that. Colossians 2, verse 8. The book of Colossians, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Any man, any man, After the any, hold on, any man. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. At this point, the church of Colossae, this is Greece, okay? But who was ruling during this time? Rome was ruling. 
So the any man is making reference to Rome. That's the any man. You understand? Be well as any man spoil you through philosophy. Because what were they teaching us? They were teaching us uh, pagan customs, pagan rites. You understand? We was learning all these uh, um, abominable customs, your Valentine's Day, your Christmas, you know, which they call it Saturnalia, and so on and so forth. That's what they were, they, were te- they were indoctrinating us. That's the point. They were indoctrinating us. So the same people that was doing this to us, spoiling us with philosophies during the time of Rome, they are back today. The same people, they call themselves the Americans, the Europeans, the Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese. That's what they call themselves today. You understand? The Russians. They are the same people that are spoiling us with philosophies, Christianity, Islam, you know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays, December 25th, New Year's Day. You understand? All of that, that's the philosophy that has imprisoned our people. You understand? Because our people spend money on that day. They worship birthdays. They be worshiping their kids. They be worshiping each other, taking selfies. No, it's my birthday. So that day is about you where you worship yourself and you want yourself to be worshiped. That's why people get upset when nobody says happy birthday. No, you didn't even say happy birthday to me. I'm telling you couples, married couples be fighting because the husband forgot their wife's birthday. What does that tell you? This is some evil, wicked stuff. Idolatry. You understand? Heavy stuff. All right. Go back to Isaiah now. Now Colossians. Finish Colossians. Colossians 2 verse 8. The book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Mm-hmm. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Read. After the tradition of men. Stop right there. So these philosophies, these vain deceits, these lies, these are traditions of men. So this white man, the traditions that he came with is lies and philosophies to do what? To spoil us, to mentally keep us in prison. You understand? Go ahead. After the rudiments of the world. The rudiments of the world is the workings of the world. You see the way the, the world is moving, the way the, the way the things are set up in this world, every year is the same thing being repeated and just being escalated. Guess what? That's the, that's the rudiments of the world. Christmas. You understand? Christmas is the rudiment of the world. That's man-made. Birthdays, man-made. Mother's Day, Women's Month. That's a man-made, that's a new thing on the earth. Whatever happened to the good old honor your mother and your father? What happened to that? What happened to applying the civil law one to another? Why do we need a woman's month? The hell is this? But that's the rudiments of the world, of this world that we are in now. Satan's kingdom. Go ahead. After the rudiments of the world. Mm-hmm. And not after Christ. And not after Christ. Because these philosophies, they are not teaching our people to come back to the Lord. They are teaching our people to reject and stay and move farther and farther from the Most High. That's what they are designed to do. You understand? Go back to where he was at now. Isaiah 42 verse 22 again. The book of Isaiah chapter 42 verses 22. Mm -hmm. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. Read. They are all of them snared in holes. Come on. And they are hid in prison houses. So the holes that we are snared in is the things I just mentioned. Christianity, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, birthdays, okay? Christmas, Mother's Day, Women's Month, Father's Day. All of these are holes of society that society has set up for people to be trapped up in. Another thing is what? Is, 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 is Sasa. Sasa is a hold. Those are the holes that our people get trapped up in, our, our sisters. They get trapped up, trapped up in, the, in those holes so to collect social security. Okay? 
And what is the, the downside is you keep popping babies because the government will take care of you. You see that thing? So you, could you imagine they are telling you you don't need no man, but you still have babies. You don't need to get married, but you still have kids. You understand? Not only that, they say we're going to reward you with a monthly, with a monthly allowance to take care of these children on your behalf for you. So who's really creating a situation for, for, for these broken families? Wicked Israelites that consent to the wicked system that we are in by rejecting the Bible. That's the point. Okay? They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. Okay? The lands of our captivity, these are prison houses. We are prisoners of war. It sounds extreme and out there, but it is the truth. We are prisoners of war. You understand? We are those prisoners of war. We are for a prey. The nations are preying on us because the nations won't survive without us. They won't survive without the free, free slave labor. They are still collecting it today. The little, the little uh, crumbs they give us on the, at the end of the month is just to, to, cloud, to destroy our minds. They are bribing us, basically. That's what they're doing. They are bribing us. They give that destroy the heart. That's what we're getting every month. We're supposed to rule the earth. You understand? That's why now I say we are for a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none saith restore. No nation say give them everything that you've stolen from these people. Nobody says that. And they're not going to give it up willingly. In their minds, these things belong to them. But the days will come when we get everything that was stolen from us. In fact, they will have to bring it. They, will have, they themselves will bring it. Voluntarily. Voluntarily, they will bring it. Okay? Now, uh, let's go back to Psalms now. Go back to Psalms 142. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 7. Bring my soul no, no. out of prison. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Read verse 7 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Bring my soul out of prison. He says, bring my soul out of prison. Because our souls now, guess what? They are mentally imprisoned. We are mentally, spiritually, we are mentally imprisoned as a people. You understand? Our people that don't know this gospel, they are under a spell. And the Bible is the only spell breaker that will break that cord. That our people, because our people now is like, you see that movie, The Matrix? When Neo now is being unplugged from The Matrix, you see like these, you see these bodies that are connected. You see that movie, The Matrix? You see all these bodies, it's like a farm, a factory of where the, mind, the Negro mindset is being manufactured. You see all these bodies right inside bottles. They are connected, they are feeding on the system of Babylon. You understand? The system, the wicked system of America that is perpetrated through the whole earth. When Negro, when Neo was unplugged from that thing, you would see, I mean, it was a painful process that he went through for him to be unplugged. I mean, his whole body was connected with tubes. Spiritually, that's how our people are right now. Every fiber of their being is connected to the system and they will fight you to protect it. Isn't that what Morpheus was telling Neo? They are so hopelessly, hopelessly dependent on the system that they will fight you to protect it. That's why when we go to the streets, the first people to fight us is our own people. That movie was a heavy movie, okay? Read that again, verse 7, Psalms 142. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 7. Go ahead. Bring my soul out of prison, mm -hmm. that I may praise thy name. The righteousness shall compass me about. No, the righteous, 
That's talking about righteous Israelites that will keep God's commandment. Remember the verse above it, it says, um, the, the verse 5 says, I cried unto thee, O Lord. I said, thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. In the land of the living, we are going to be surrounded by what? By the righteous, because we will all be keeping the commandments. We are all going to be righteous. Nobody going to be wicked as hell. No, no. We are all will be righteous. We just have to endure unto the end. Okay, read that again, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 142, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Bring my soul out of prison. Read. That I may praise thy name. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall compass me about. Read. For thou shalt deal bountifully with me. That's in the kingdom. When the Lord is going to deal bountifully with us, that's when we have the kingdom on heaven on earth. The bountifulness, you can read about it in Isaiah 60. But what I want to show you here says, it says um, that I may praise thy name. The righteous shall compass me about. Give me that in Proverbs. Give me Proverbs 22, verse 29. Proverbs 22, verse 29. That's a beautiful verse right there. Read what you got. Yes, sir. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Come on, stay with me. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verses 29. Go ahead. See, seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. The book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 29. Read. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. You see that? that, he, that that's some heavy stuff. He says, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before bombs. Read that again, verse 29. Hmm, heavy stuff. Read that. Proverbs 22, verse 29. Go ahead. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. He shall stand before kings. He shall stand before kings. The righteous shall compass me about in the land of the living. Go back to Psalms now, 142. Verse 7 again. Psalms, chapter 142, verse 7. Read. Bring my soul out of prison, that I may praise thy name. Mm -hmm. The righteous shall compass me about, for thou shalt deal bountifully with me. He says, for because thou shalt deal bountifully with me. When we are in the kingdom, the Lord will deal bountifully with us. Next chapter, verse 1. Psalms 143, verse 1. Come on. Psalms chapter 143, verse 1. Read. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Give ear to my supplications. In faithfulness unto me and in thy righteousness. Read. And enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. You see what he's saying? In thy sight shall no man, he says what? For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. No man shall be justified in thy sight. Give me that in Psalms chapter 5 and 5. Because King David is repeating himself here. Psalms chapter 5. Psalms chapter 5 verse 5, read that. Psalms chapter 5 verse 5. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Go back to where he was at now. Psalms 143. Read verse 3 now. Psalms chapter 143, verse 3. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. Mm -hmm. He hath spitten my life down to the ground. He hath made me to dwell in darkness. As those that have been long dead. 
You see what he's saying? It's the same thing that we read in Proverbs 21. Give me Proverbs 21 verse 16. Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. Watch this. This is some heavy stuff that King David is saying here. Hmm. Proverbs 21 verse 16. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 21 verse 16. Mm -hmm. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. Because when we went outside of, out of the way of understanding, we stopped going after the way of understanding, which is keeping of God's commandments. That's how we get understanding. We remained in the congregation of the dead, which is the masses of our people. They are in the congregation of the dead. You understand? So now, because of what? Because of the enemy persecuting our people. Go back to Psalms 143 now. Psalms 143 verse 3. The book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 3. Go ahead. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. Mm -hmm. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath done what? He hath made. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. Remember, how did the enemy smite our life down to the ground? They put us in slavery. You understand? They put us in slavery. Not only that, they they going far beyond what the Lord wanted them to do. Watch this. Give me that in Zechariah, okay? They went far beyond. They went above and beyond to make sure that we as a people are destroyed. Give me that in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 15. The book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 15. Go ahead. And I am very so displeased with the heathen that are at ease. Mm -hmm. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped for the affliction. Do you see what they are doing? It says they helped to forward their affliction. So it's not that we are not already at the bottom. Yes, we are, but they are making it worse for us. They are going above and beyond to make sure that we are utterly destroyed. But according to Leviticus 26, 44 down, the Lord says, for, but for their sakes, I will, he says, for their sakes, I'm going to remember their ancestors. I'm not going to utterly destroy them because of the covenant that he made with our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But our, the, our enemies, they help to forward our affliction. That's the point. Okay, go back to where he was at. Psalms 143. Psalms chapter 143, verse 3. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul. Mm -hmm. He hath smitten my life down to the ground. Right. He hath made me to dwell in darkness as those that have been long dead. Because when we are in darkness, give me that in Sirach 11 verse 16, Ecclesiasticus. Okay. He says, he had made me to dwell in darkness. Listen, our people are, are in darkness. Our people are in, our people are blind. They don't know what's going on. You understand? Sirach 11 verse 16. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 11, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Error and darkness had their beginning together with sinners. And evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. You see that thing? Error and darkness, that goes into sin. As a, as a nation, we are in error and we are in darkness. Give me that, give me that in Job 10, 21. You know what? Just get to verse 22. Job chapter 10, verse 22. So that error and the darkness goes into sin. You understand? And that's what our enemies are doing to us. It says, um, he hath made me to dwell in darkness, meaning in sin, because they create an environment for sin to flourish to make sure that our people are trapped up in those, in those evils. Read that. Job chapter 10, verse 22. Job chapter 10, verse 22. Mm -hmm. A land of darkness, as darkness itself, you see that thing? And of a the land of, hold on, a land of darkness as darkness itself. What land is that? The lands of our captivity. America is the darkest kingdom on earth. The, weak, the most wicked kingdom on earth in these last days. America. Go ahead. And of the shadow of death. Slavery. Without any order. There's no order. Everything is out of work. You understand? 
Women are becoming men, men are becoming women, children want to be adults. Okay, go ahead. And where the light is as darkness. You see that thing? Even the light that exists is just darkness. This is the darkest kingdom on earth because Esau, he searches out iniquities. They investigate the sins, the evils that the previous captivities they was doing. The witchcraft they were performing, Esau took all of that and combined them into one. That's why Job is saying, listen, the land of darkness as darkness itself. The darkest kingdom on earth. Okay, go back to Psalms 143. Psalms 143 and verse, verse 4 now. The book of Psalms, chapter 143, verse 4. Mm -hmm. Therefore is my spirit overwhelmed within me. My heart is within me. My heart within me is desolate. Because of that darkness, because of that sin. Go ahead. I remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. So now he says, because now we are in, uh, he says, because I'm in trouble, this, the thing that is going to help me to come out of trouble is that what he says, read verse five again. Psalms chapter 143 verse five. Go ahead. I remember the days of old. So now he says, be, for me to come out of this, now I'm remembering the days of old, the things that you did in the past. Go ahead. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on. on the work of thy hands. He says, I muse on the work of thy hands, meaning I meditate. This is what I occupy my mind with. I occupy my mind on the glorious things that you've done in the past. Watch this. Go back to Psalms now. Psalm 77. Watch. Psalms chapter 77 and verse 6. You know what? Start of verse 5. Psalm 77 verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 5. Mm -hmm. I considered the days of old, the years of ancient times. The years of ancient times. Go ahead. I call to remembrance my song in the night. Mm -hmm. I commune my, with my own heart, and my spirit made dil and my spirit made diligent search. He says, his spirit made diligent search. He decided, I'm going to search the scriptures so that I can be comforted of the things that you've done in the past. Jump down to verse 10. Watch this. Verse 10. And I said, this is my infirmity, mm -hmm. but I will remember the, the years of the right hand of the Most High. He says, I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. He's going to tell you what that is. Jump down to verse 15. You know what? Read verse, verse 11, then we're going to jump. Read verse 11. Verse 11, I will remember the works of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. Thy wonders of old. Thy wonders of old. Jump down to verse 14. Verse 14. Mm -hmm. Thou art the God that doest wonders. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. You see what he's saying? He says, thou art the God that doest wonders. Because guess what? The wonders that the Lord did. Read the next verse. Go ahead. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, mm. the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Salah. You see that thing? Where is he? So David is remembering what? What the Lord did for us in Egypt, the Exodus. Listen, the, to, till this day, the Exodus, the history of the Exodus is still being written. The history, what happened in Egypt when the Lord delivered us with the mighty hand. Remember, there was chariots. We saw the chariots when we were coming out. The Moses parted, parted the Red Sea. We walked on dry ground. Hmm? Heavy stuff. You understand? So David is saying, listen, I'm going to go back to the past now so I can comfort myself on, the, on thy works of old. Okay. Read that again, verse 15. Psalm chapter 77, verse 15. Read. Thou hast with thine arm redeemed thy people, mm. the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Salah. Jump down to verse 20. Verse 20. 
Thou leadest thy people like a flock by the head of Moses and Aaron. You see that thing? So he's going back to Egypt because that was the greatest deliverance on earth. Nobody has seen that before. You understand? So he's going to be again this, in these last days. You see this exodus that we're going to come out of? Listen. Man. Mm. Heavy stuff. Go back to Psalms now. 143. We're almost done. Psalms 143 verse 5. The book of Psalms, the 143 verse 5. Read. I remember the days of old. Mm -hmm. I meditate on all thy works. Read. I muse on, on the work of thy hands. He says, I muse, meaning my mind is occupied on the works of thy hands, the works of all that you did in the past. Go ahead. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. Mm -hmm. My soul thirsted after thee as a thirsty land, Salah. You see, that's how you, you, when you are in trouble, that's what you must do. David is teaching us here. You understand? I stretch out my, I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsted after thee as a thirsty land, Salah. Go ahead. Hear me speedily, O Lord. Mm -hmm. really? My spirit faileth. My spirit faileth. Hide not, hide not thy face from me. Mm -hmm. Lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Because guess what? When the Lord hides his face from us, we go into the pit. What is the pit? The holes that society has set up for us to be trapped up in. Because now we are at their what? We are, we are, we are, we are vulnerable now. We are exposed. Go ahead. Cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning. Mm -hmm. For in thee do I trust. Read. Cause me to know the way wherein I should walk. For I lift up my soul unto thee. For I lift up my soul unto thee. We must give our souls to the Lord. We must give our mind to the most High God. So the Lord will be able to lead us in the way in which we should walk. The path of righteousness. Go ahead. Deliver me, O Lord, mm -hmm. from mine enemies. Mm. I flee unto thee to hide me. You see what he's saying? Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. For it says, I flee unto thee to hide me. So how does the Lord, how is the Lord going to hide us? Guess what? You see that part right there? It says, I flee unto thee to hide me. Mm. That's heavy right there. Read it again. Psalms chapter 143 verse 9. Mm. Deliver me, O Lord, from mine enemies. I flee unto thee to hide me. Because we're going to be beamed up into the chariot when the Lord returns. That's heavy right there. Mm. Go ahead. Teach me to do thy will. Stop right there. You see that part right there? It says, teach me to do thy will. Guess what? You must be taught to do the will of the Father. It's not going to land on your lap. That's the point. It, David, he says, teach me to do thy will. Meaning, teach me to apply these commandments. You understand? Go ahead. Teach me to do thy will. Mm -hmm. For thou art my God. Read. Thy spirit is good. Lead me into the, into the land of uprightness. That's the land of Jerusalem. When the Lord returns, it's going to be the land of uprightness. Because today is not the land of uprightness. You've got white people over there calling themselves Jewish, having a gay parade every year. Go ahead. Eating pork. Come on. Quicken me, O Lord. Quicken me. For thy quicken name's me. sake. Hold on. It says, quicken me, O Lord. To quicken means to change. Born again. Go ahead. Quicken me, O Lord. Mm -hmm. For thy name's sake. Read. For thy righteousness sake, bring my soul out of trouble. Bring my soul out of trouble. Because guess what? Our, as a nation, our soul is in trouble. As a nation, we are in trouble. You understand? Because our people are under a spell. We need to bring the gospel to them to, be, to break the spell. You understand? Read. And of thy mercy, cut off mine enemies. Mm. And destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Because we are the servants of the Most High. Read again that last verse, verse 13. I mean, verse 12. Psalms chapter 143, verse 12. Read. And of thy mercy, 
cut off mine enemies mm. and destroy all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. You see what he's saying? It says, and of thy mercy cut off mine enemies and destroy all, the, all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servant. Because in order for us to serve the Lord, our enemies must be destroyed. To serve the Lord without fear, because right now we serve the Lord with fear. Do you understand? But on this day, we're not going to serve the Lord with fear. We're going to serve the Lord with what? With sincerity and truth. We're going to serve the Lord with joy. We're going to serve the Lord without fear. Guess what? When we do that, that's, that's when our enemies are going to be destroyed. That's wisdom of Solomon 18 verse 7. Is the same thing. Matthew chapter 6, thy kingdom come. When our enemies get destroyed, that's when we get delivered and we will serve the Lord without fear. I'm going to end that last right there. Okay, let's break bread. And in the honor of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. First Corinthians. First Corinthians 11 verse 23. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup, when he had sub saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.